Hi folks, today I'm going to be using a balance truing caliper to true in the flat the balance wheel of my Illinois Bun Special. I'm not an expert in the use of balance truing calipers, so I'd like this to be treated as a diary of how I correct this particular problem with this particular balance wheel. However, I will relate a couple key facts about the balance truing caliper and their use as conveyed in uh, Henry Freed's watch repairs manual. So this is a parallel balance truing caliper. Often you see them with a hub in the center and arms kind of in an X shape. Um, here, uh, when I turn the knob, this half will move away from the bottom half, but stay parallel. And that way your pivots are always fitting into, um, into holes at 90 degrees to the balance wheel. At the end of the balance truing caliper are nibs. There are two nibs here and two nibs here. And these contain holes that your balance pivots fit into. This is a balance truing index and it's fitted to an elevator so you can move it up and down relative to the balance wheel. Here we can see a post so you could fit the elevator here and use the index with this set of nibs rather than this set. My caliper is different from another of other calipers in that it has only a truing component and not a truing component and a poising component. You can tell because of the profile of the nibs. So um, here, the nibs on both ends of my caliper are cross-drilled and they are not just cups. They are drilled in and the, um, the end of the nib is domed. And what this means is when you tighten the caliper, the, the uh, nib will grip the conical part of the staff rather than your pivots. And that allows you to make adjustments to the balance with your finger, with your finger, um, while the balance is in the caliper once the caliper is closed. However, uh, in a number of texts, you'll see illustrations of calipers that have both truing components, a truing end, and a poising end. And uh, in the poising end, the nibs will look different. The nibs look just like cups, like uh, little cups, and there they will grip just the end of the pivot of your balance staff. And you cannot use the poising end for truing because you will break the pivot off. What's good about the um, what's good about the nibs in the truing part of the caliper, and here I only have truing parts, is that you can make adjustments to the balance wheel while the wheel is set in the tool because it doesn't just grip the um, the uh, the pivot. It dri it grips the stronger conical part of the balance staff. So just to make this a little clearer. Uh, if you look at the the, um, the images and text in uh, Henry Freed's watch repairs manual, you'll see uh, two types of nibs. One, where when the nib is tightened, uh, the hole will grip the conical part of the balance staff, which is much stronger than the cylindrical pivot. However, in the poising end, you'll see a super low friction cup, such that when you tighten the caliper, it will only grip the very end of the balance staff. This is low friction so you can poise the balance effectively. However, if you were to try to uh, true the balance in this part of the caliper, you would break off this cylindrical pivot. Okay, so that's my understanding as the difference between the two ends, uh, a truing end and a poising end. I only have the truing end. In other words, in both ends of my caliper, I only have this type of a nib in this type of hole. That's okay with me because as, you know, as George Daniel, Daniel said, it says in watchmaking, it's always best to use um, a dedicated tool for a dedicated purpose. So I use a dedicated poising tool. Uh, here I'm just uh, truing the balance, so I'm happy to use a tool that only has the capacity to true a balance and not to poison. So how do I use the tool? First of all, I think it goes without saying that I'm going to bring the index close to the wheel. I want to true in the flat here. So what I want to do is bring the uh, index close to the balance wheel rim. And then as I move the wheel, I'm going to compare the height of the rim to the level of the index. You can see there's a small gap. 
and I'm going to compare the height of the rim to the index. However, what I'm not going to do is this. This is not helpful. Fast spinning gives the illusion of flatness, or at the very least disguises where any bends are. Instead, what I'm going to do is tighten the tool just a little bit so that I actually have to use my fingers to spin the balance. And what I'm going to do is first begin at the ends of the balance arms. So that would be the end of one arm. And I'm just trying to take the measure of how far the arm is away from the index. Okay, so a small gap there. Let's go to the other arm. perhaps slightly larger, but not dramatically so. So it looks here like the arms, the height of the arms may actually be okay. Nevertheless, as we've seen, the balance wheel is definitely not true in the flat. You can see it bobbing up and down. So if the problem is not in uh, the height of the arms, there may be a problem with the balance wheel rim. Now this could arise for two reasons. First, because the rim itself is bent. For example, uh, there's some bend here, and the uh, balance wheel rim goes off in a weird direction. Second, a reason why the balance wheel rim could not be true in the flat, could be not true in the flat, is because while the arm is actually at the correct height, it's twisted in one or other directions. And this would cause a kind of U-shape in the balance wheel rim, either down or up, depending on the correction of the bend. And I'm going to show you guys that that is, in fact, what I observe here. So let's start with one arm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the balance clockwise slowly with my finger. And we're just going to observe the height of the rim relative to the index. I think I can move the index even closer here to get a better, better sense. OK. So let's watch the index and slowly move the balance. Here, it looks strongly to me like the balance rim is first moving up toward the index from its origin, moving up toward the index. And then as we get toward the end of that half of the balance, bending back down again. So what this appears to me to be, if I look at it end on, is a U shape, whoop, whoop, like that. Now let's check out the other half of the balance. All right, so we're gonna start at the arm and now spin clockwise and let's work our way around. Uh, here, a definite drop relative to the index, and as I get towards the arm, coming back up. So again, a U-shape, but this time down rather than up. So what this suggests to me is that actually, it's not the height of the arms that is the problem. It's actually that the arms may themselves be twisted. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring you guys in for a close look under the microscope at the damage uh, to the balance wheel inflicted by the previous watchmaker. And I'm going to show how that damage, uh, at least in my opinion, is consistent with the pattern of distortion in the flat that we see here. So let's just take a minute to observe uh, the center of the balance under close magnification. And here we can see the damage inflicted by the previous watchmaker. The previous person evidently chose the incorrect punch to insert their new staff uh, and has made direct contact when hammering between the punch and the balance hole. So you can see to the left of my rivet, we see an indentation where the last guy's punch has made direct contact with the balance. And what this is going to do, I think, is because it is compressing the metal on the top side of the balance, uh, on the left side of the screen, that this is gonna cause this arm, this side, to roll up. And what this is gonna cause is first uh, an upward bend in this arm, sorry, <laughs> an upward bend in this arm, and a consequent upward 
bowing or distortion of this side of the balance. And because it's raising the arm on the back side of this arm, we should see a downward bend on this side of the balance. I'll also show you the, um, the balance from the underside and you can actually see that the distortion is substantial. So here's the underside of my balance wheel where it meets the hub of the staff. You can see the, uh, the intersection of the two and you can also see the reflection of the hub in the uh, polished arms of the balance wheel. So here you can immediately see that the distortion is substantial, that on the left side, underneath where the balance has been directly hit, the balance is not sitting flush with the staff hub. Now this is not because I didn't push the balance wheel onto the staff. Indeed I did, you'll recall if, I, if you watched my last video. The problem is that the balance, in my opinion, is not flat, that the arm has been twisted, that the arms have been twisted uh, by the impact of the blow on the top side, and it's out of focus there, but it's on the left. So what's this doing to the balance wheel rim? Well, uh, the uh, part of the rim that is closest to you, where the distortion is, that's the back side. So it should bend down the part of the balance to the right. However, when we look uh, on the far side, uh, this is the front, uh, the part closest to the balance wheel rim uh, for the other arm that is going away from us here, right? So what this should do is cause an upward bend uh, in that arm. So this is a twisting motion. It's not that the arms are, uh, it's not that the arms are not level and it's not that the rim itself, oh, sorry, <laughs> and it's not that the rim uh, itself is bent. The problem is that the arms are twisted uh, by the impact of the blow from a punch and there we can get a better view of the damage inflicted uh, during the previous staff change. So we're going to have to find a way to correct this. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to correct it at the site of the original damage, um, but we should at least be able to correct it so that the balance is running true in the flat. And I'll talk next about how we're going to do that. So before we actually move on to correction, let's just make sure that the uh, distortion in the balance that we would expect to see uh, based on the damage that we observed is actually the way we observe it. So I showed before that we did have these sort of U-shaped bends, but let's just confirm that the side on which we would expect those bends um, is actually the side in which they occur. So the damage is on this side. So uh, what we'd expect is that this, the far side, this side, the right side, is where we would have a downward bend. So let's just check that that's the downward bent arm. Yes, indeed it is. Likewise, we expect an upward bend from this arm. Yes, there we see it, upward U-shaped bend. Uh, so it seems like we found the smoking gun here of uh, what's causing the um, the uh, vertical distortion in our balance wheel. So next we're going to go about correcting it. So how are we actually going to straighten out our band? Well, first of all, uh, Henry Fried advises doing it in the tool uh, with reference to the index. And because the, uh, the holes in the truing end of the caliper in these nibs grip the conical part of the staff, uh, you should not damage the staff as long as the tool is tightened down properly. Of course, if the tool is a little bit loose and um, one of the balance pivots is not fully inserted into the nib and the nib bears against the cylindrical part of the balance pivot, of course, you have the capacity to break the uh, staff here. But as long as you've got it tightened down, then you should be able to use your fingers to bend the balance back into true. So he actually talks about exactly this kind of U-shaped bend, the twisted balance arm. And for one that goes down, he advises putting your thumb in the center and your forefinger at the end of the arm and pushing up like so. So I'm not using much force here. And of course, here's the true test of whether your rivet is, um, is secure. I remember the first time I changed the balance staff, uh, I went to true it. 
and uh, the rivet broke. Uh, it, it just didn't hold. I hadn't riveted the uh, balance properly. So I've done this a little bit, just pushing up really gently. And then we can come back and check the trueness of this half of the balance wheel. So let's just look at the gap between uh, index and balance. There we go. That's quite a bit better, quite a bit better. We don't see that sagging anymore. So that's good. Then I'm gonna to go to the other side and uh, I'm gonna reverse the procedure. I'm going to uh, push down in the center of the wheel. Okay, so I'm now on the other side and uh, in contrast to the previous adjustment, I'm going to use my thumb as the fulcrum here and just push down a little bit in the center of the wheel, even a little bit towards the arm. Then again, come back in with our index, check that the upward bend of this, the upward twisted kind of character of this, this bend is, is removed. Okay, to my eye, that's a darn sight better. So let's just give the balance uh, the capacity to swing a little bit more. Just loosen the caliper a bit. That's better. That's definitely better. Still wobbling a bit. But better. So I'm going to turn off the camera, get the old loop out, and I'm going to work on this a little bit more. One other thing I'm doing just very briefly here is uh, coming in with brass tweezers just to concentrate force a little better in twisting at the ends of the balance arms. So uh, I don't want to dig in with the edge of my tweezers, even though they're brass, I, uh, I could mark the balance wheel rim. Um, Freed suggests uh, chamois line pliers for this purpose. I've yet to actually encounter them. Um, but I'm just grabbing with the parallel part of my tweezers and just gently exerting some upward pressure. So again, I'm not digging in the edge of my tweezers. I'm just grabbing and rotating the whole balance wheel rim from that arm up. Uh, and the idea is just to twist in a little bit more concentrated way Hold it there, release. Okay, so we are actually making really good progress here. Um, if I bring in the index closer than before, I'll show you, we'll do a recap of the two arms now, or the two, uh, the two sides of the balance wheel. Okay, so let's check in on the overall status of the balance. We are actually making really good progress. So again, we'll start from the arms. This time I'm gonna get the index very close to the balance wheel rim. So there, if I rotate the balance slow, I still see a bit of a dip. But definitely not a huge one. Likewise on the other side, I anticipate seeing a rise here, I really don't see much of one at all. So I think we're really making progress on this side. The side that's dipping down still needs a little work, but we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. Okay, I think I've reached just about the point where I'm gonna call it a day on this balance truing operation. So there's one arm. Here's the other arm. This is definitely the worst, the worst of the two. And I've done my level best to get it level. It's very close, maybe not quite, maybe I could bend it a little bit further, but uh, I'm getting to the point where I really don't wanna exert 
any more pressure uh, than is necessary to get it operable. And I think this is, I think this is operable. So um, one more thing I forgot to note earlier, the balanced train caliper has this handy little stand. So if you want to go walk away, because you're frustrated with balanced drawing, you can. Hi guys, so here's the balance back in the watch. You can see it's a darn sight better than it was. If you've watched my last video, it was really wobbling all over the place. It's definitely not perfect, but I dare not exert any more force on, uh, on the arms uh, than I already have. So I'm gonna call this a success and uh, the next repair Hopefully the last repair will be uh, replacing the impulse jewel. So thanks so much for sticking around. Uh, talk to you guys next time.